for the immediate future, I'm planning to hold an auction. Actually, so it's an auction. It's um, you know selling off of artworks for a greater cause, obviously, which is furthering my career. Um, I can't put a date on the exhibition because it's been very highly requested for some reason. But um, I feel like an exhibition is something you have to really plan for, have a very cohesive theme about. So I'm not going to rush that. But sometime in the future, I should have an exhibition. But overall, you know, in the long run, um, I just want to be known for being able to creatively output that kind of thing. So if you do know me in the future, you know that I never gave up on the art of creating, actually. The future belongs to those who take charge. Today we're meeting 19-year-old Emed Young, who is a student of medicine and surgery. She's also the youngest artist in the world to have graced the walls of Cyprus Modern Art Museum with a tribute piece titled Lagbaja, the masked one. So stay tuned. My name is Sheondro Jaye and this is Legit TV. I'm a 19-year-old medical student from the Near East University of Cyprus. So that's where I study. I'm studying medicine and surgery, but I do art as a hobby sometimes. And I think that's what I'm most, most known for, actually. So, uh, yeah. how, long, how long have you been painting and when did you know that you were really good at it? For as long as I can remember, actually, you know, um, I feel it was a very specific day, actually, in, way back in elementary school. I think it was a classwork assignment. And... Uh, I, I noticed people were flocking towards mine mostly because I don't know and even when I changed schools the same thing happened so subconsciously you just start identifying yourself as an artist oh, so I just how old were you? I think I was about six my earliest memory was about six or seven mostly but yeah I was quite you know I was quite young I discovered it young oh, okay. uh, what inspires you what inspires your work like just give us just give us an example of what sparks the light in you to do this great painting. Um, I think my inspiration comes from a lot of things actually, you know, I draw inspiration from a lot of things, but um, I'm very big on stories actually. So I'm very big on stories. Um, stories from the Bible, stories from, you know, people I meet every day, stories I see. So what happens is I create a mental image of it, of whatever story is being told to me. And I, and I decide to, you know, capture it and just keep it in a painting, that kind of thing. That's my way of documenting the things I see, you know, so that I draw inspiration from anything, mostly nature, you know. Um, I get revelations too because I am a Christian, so sometimes I draw inspiration from that, but those are really the main driving forces behind most of my paintings. That's impressive. <laughs> um, why did you choose to study medicine over painting? Um, like I said in a previous interview, I think um, painting is something that comes to me naturally, actually. It's something that comes to me naturally. So I think, um, or I believe that if something comes to you naturally, there's no need to, um, I mean, there is a need, but then I have a twin flame for both the arts and the sciences, you know. So, you know, I decided medicine isn't something you can just learn on your own, but I am a self-taught artist. So I said, okay, maybe, you know, sometime in the future, I'll go get a class, that kind of thing. Those don't take too long, like medicine. So I could do both, that kind of thing. That's great. So um, what's a typical day like for someone like you? You're both in the medical line and then you're also a painter. What's a typical day like for you? A typical day, uh, it's what you would imagine actually. You wake up very early in the morning. Most classes start by 9 a.m. and by 5 on a good day 3. Um, I don't usually you know, just set out to paint. Usually on, unless I get that inspiration or I started you know, working on a project before. So I, you know, I continue the project maybe after school. But um, I feel like everything at the end of the day boils down to time management, really. Because, you know, you can't, um, those are two very demanding things to do. So the way you manage your time, I can dedicate, let's say, an hour to a project. Depending on how quick I am, I could finish it up. So that's a typical day. You know, I read a lot. Um, I try and educate myself on some things. Yeah, I don't what's know. your favorite book? Do you have a favorite book? 
Uh, it, it, it would be purple hibiscus. I'm a huge fan of Chimamanda. <laughs> Chimamanda, honestly. Honestly. Mostly poetry. I don't have like a favorite book, but I have like a favorite, you know, poetry collection, that kind of thing. So Rupi Kaur, um, the rest of them, honestly. There's so many of them, I can't pinpoint, but I read, actually. Okay, um, so what does your family feel about this two extreme ends <laughs> of career and talent that you've chosen? Do they support you? Like, how, how does the, what's, what, what's the discussion like in the house? <laughs> uh, so, are you studying medicine today? Oh no, mommy, I'm painting today. Like, what's, what's the discussion? Oh no, they support me a hundred percent, hundred percent. They have my back actually, you know, and I'm really grateful to them for it because um, you don't, you don't find that very commonly in most Nigerian households. It's either this or that, that yeah. kind of thing. So, you know, but then there's no hard or fast rules over here, that kind of thing. I feel like they have my best interests at heart at the root of it, that kind of thing. So if I decided today I just want to chase medicine, they would support me. If I just wanted to chase art, they would also support me. So seeing as though they would they want me to do both or they support me doing both, I feel like the main concern and I feel like any Nigerian parent would or any parent at all would be concerned about is these are two very demanding things. How would you juggle them, you know? So they just have your best interest at heart really. But they support every single thing I do. That's, That's it. You're, you're lucky. <laughs> what are your plans for the future? Mm, I can't disclose all on camera, but um, for the immediate future, I'm planning to hold an auction. Okay. Actually, so it's an auction. It's um, you know selling off of artworks for a greater cause, obviously, okay. which is furthering my career. Um, I can't put a date on the exhibition because it's been very highly requested for some reason. But um, I feel like an exhibition is something you have to really plan for, have a very cohesive theme about. So I'm not going to rush that. But sometime in the future, I should have an exhibition. But overall, you know, in the long run, um, I just want to be known for being able to creatively output that kind of thing. So if you do know me in the future, you know that I never gave up on the art of creating, actually. Uh, what what advice do you have for young girls who want to be like you? Um, okay, not to sound cliche because you know there's the generic chase your dreams and things like that. But I feel um, to me, what I would say is tell your story. You know, um, you have to you have to be able to tell your story as a young girl in Africa, especially as a Nigerian girl. Um, we're at a time where Africa is being pushed out there. So this is actually the time to tell your story. And, um, you know, some, I figured, just, just personal lessons, I figured that you get so hung up on the destination that we forget about the journey. So the journey is really what you have to tell. That's your story, really. Because if you just pop up one day and, you know, there's no story behind it, you know. So what's the creativity there? What's the story there? How do you inspire people and yourself? You know, so I feel like most people should concentrate on the journey because that is what makes you you. That's the becoming of it all is what you should focus on. So, yeah.